on for two minutes. You got to do it over. Yeah. All right. All right. Today's shear is being sponsored by Yosef Pinchas Ben Mordechai, which is Reb Naftali, Reb Naftali Rachel's father. Reb Yosef Pinchas Ben Mordechai, Zichron Levrocha. So, when I first came to Ramat Bet Shemesh, I don't know if you remember this. What's that? When I first came to Ramat Bet Shemesh, I used to hang out in Beis Tfilo a lot, and I saw a very chosh looking guy, a guy with a big hydras upon him. His name was Rabbi Tali. And he used to talk to me about the daf. I thought he was a Rosh Hashiva. But then when I found out that he has a successful uh, accounting practice in America, I was even more in his ball. So this is a guy that learns all the time, and when he has to go, travel for business. So every couple of months, he has to travel for business. So then he came to the shir, it was a big schos, all the way in the beginning, two years ago. And la'at la'at, he started leaving us and going to America, but the kids are now, because of corona and everything, he's with us. He's so Baruch Hashem, I hope you're going to be here for, like, like you used to be, and your father's neshama should have an alila Bez Hashem. Who else is sponsoring today? What's the name? Gary? Sponsored by Simcha Leib Steinberg for his great auntie's yard site, Chano Baz Dov David. Yeah? Dov David? Nochamo. Sponsored by Simcha Leib Steinberg for his gra- great auntie's yard site, Chano Baz Dov David, or Baz David, just in case. Today, today, Mamish today, is the second anniversary of Hillel Abrams joining our shir. He joined us on Shavuos two years ago in the basement for next door in Avi Ezri. And is a tremendous chus. Is the air conditioner not on again? It's on. Uh, is it on 21? Yes. It's on 16. All right. Fine. After the shear, remind me we're going to have to do something about that air conditioner. All right. Here's tonight's emails from Yoni Nagler. Hi, Rebelli. Thank you for teaching me for the past five months. Most often, I catch this shear on YouTube 1.75. That's the speed, Rachman. If you haven't been here for a while, 1.75 is the speed. Sometimes I have a schus to catch. I'm, I'm actually boiling. Sometimes I have the schus to catch you live on Zoom. It would be wonderful if you could do a live recording of your 2 a.m. Shavuot shir. Just kidding, of course. I wholeheartedly agree with Avi Mandelbaum. This shir does help people keep in touch more often. I've known Avi since we were about four. We went to elementary school together, where I also had the schus to learn Gemara with Rav Moshe Yankalevich. In sixth grade, his father was a Talmud of the Chavetz Chaim. Avi and I also learned together in Yeshiva and Eretz Yisrael, and now we connect over the daf that you teach. I've included a picture of a great moment from yesterday's daf. All the best, and have a great yontif. And I love the slogan, it's not about the daf, it's about the Yoni. Not a typo. Yoni Nagler, Staten Island, New York. Here's the picture, a classic of me ripping up one of our charts because it had a Vizar on it. Mom, it's a classic. I hope everybody else will do it. All right. So what we're doing tonight is we're going to learn Daf Pehei. It's a really short Daf. And then we are going to go back. Everybody, we're going to take a, a quick break, a couple minute break. And those of you who heard already Pei Dalid or are not interested could get up and leave and nobody will be insulted. And then I'm just going to do Pei Dalid all over again as a Chazar of what we did on Shavuos night. Shavuos, we had a shir at 2 a.m. in the morning. This is probably the biggest break I've had between shir, almost 40 hours, 42 hours, I think, something like that, between the last time we learned Torah. Is that Yisachar? No way. Yisachar himself is here. Shalom Aleichem. We have a, a bunch of chashva guests. We have Ben Ishchai. That's a huge, a big round of applause for Ben Ishchai's anical. He's been with us every single day on Zoom. He's only, how old are you, 15? Tremendous chus for us to have 15 year olds learning Torah every day. All right. Zok de Heilig and Mishnah. We'll just repeat the Mishnah. We did it on Matzi Shavuos, but everybody's half asleep. And it's an easy one. And it's actually a classic where when you look at the daf, it looks extremely difficult and all these diagrams and Rashi and the Masifta and Art Scroll. And it's very simple. Says the Mishnah. Minayin la rugo shi shisha al shisha tvachim. So. We're in a theme, we're almost going to get to the end of the theme, where we're bringing random halachas that have nothing to do with Hilchah Shabbos, and we're looking for a source, but not a real source, it's an asmachta source, 
There's some sort of pasuk which hints to it, but it's not a real limud. Nesmachta, you can lean on it. And until we finally get to the mission that we're looking for, which is on Daf Peivav and Aleph, which talks about Mila on Shabbos. Minayin la ruga, this is a halacha hilchas klein. The halacha obviously is you now take two seeds and plant them next to each other, two different minim. Minayin la ruga shi shishal shishat fachim. If you have a patch in your backyard that's six tfachim by six tfachim, what could you plant in a patch like that? You could go crazy if you want, knock yourself out, and zoyrim betoycha chamisha zeroinim. You could plant five different types of vegetables all within six tfachim by six tfachim. How? Arba ala beruches arugo vaches bems arboisa. By the way, I heard terrible news before I got here, and that is that. There were a tremendous amount of new cases over Shabbos. I heard reports of over 100, over 300, and that Bibi's already starting to talk about clamping down. So we got a daven that we could stick it out in the base medicine that it's not a, a one-time thing. And we got to be careful. People are laughing at the whole thing. And so this is not an exact picture of what we're talking about, minus the blue dots. If you want to plant five different types, you just follow these purple lines. One line here, one line here, one line here, one line here. And smack in the middle, this red dot, is number five. What's the idea? The idea is that between each one goes out one and a half tfachim. So basically, from the center to any given place, you have to have three tfachim. It's from the center of the seed. I don't care how much the seed grew and how many roots it has and that the roots are five tfachim long. The seed. From one seed, and all you got in the middle is a, a single seed. One seed in the middle is going to be three tfachim to anything else. Now, the issue, of course, is what about this guy? This guy and this guy, they're perpendicular to each other. They're very close to each other. They're within three tfachim. Why is that okay? Because when it comes to Kalayim, the idea is that it should be visu visually separate. And when they're, one is going east-west and the other one is going north-south, it's fine. I know that there are different, different meaning over here. This is cucumbers, this is tomatoes, that's fine. As long as you can see it, Varaya, I could have, let's say for instance, I have a, a guy, my neighbor, he has a fence. I could plant my cucumbers all the way up to the fence, he plants his tomatoes all the way to the fence, underground, they're basically touching each other, that's fine. Halakhically, it's fine because there's a fence dividing, it looks separate. So since all these five look separate, and you have a guy in the middle, we're good. Okay, that's the idea. And that's the hardest part of today's daf. Says the, says the Mishnah, how do I know this? So what do I do? Four strips on the four sides of this patch, and one single seed in the center, how do I know this? And this is an asmachta. It doesn't say it in singular, it's plural. And therefore what? So explains the Gemara. So from here I learn I can plant one. It's another one. Have a tray. So we have one and one is two. Zero el tray. And that's what the end of the Mishnah says. It says zero el. It doesn't say zaro. So zero el is two. Two plus two. Harba. Tatsmiach. Chad. Hochamsha. Okay. So in the Pasuk it says five. Where in the world does it say in the Pasuk anything about six tvachim by six tvachim? That I have to leave up to Chachamim. Vekim lul rabbon and the chamsha beshito leyankim adodi. So, Chachamim know that within six Tfachim, the way we have it now, they're not going to, A, nurse from each other, they visually look different, so everything is good. That's the Gemara. So, holding on today's daf, this is where we need to be. Uminalan, Dohad, the Kimlu, the Rabbanon, Milsi. How do we know? This explains Rashi. Mehecha Teisa, Chachamim, understand about how seeds grow. It wasn't given to them uh, by Sinai. What are they, farmers? 
Now, if farmers know this kind of su- stuff, then automatically Chacham also know it. But Mechit Eisa, human beings know about this. Says Gemara, Omar Rav Yechon, Omar Maidich Siv, Loisasig Gvul Reyecho, Asher Govlu Rishonim. You're not allowed to secretly move your border into your neighbor's border. Don't steal from your neighbor the border. So that would be good if the Pazik said, don't steal your neighbor's border. But what does the Pazik say? Asher govlu rishonim. The border that the original, the early people, they had. Do I care if it's an early guy or a later guy? Don't steal the border. What's the nafkimino, right? You hear the kasha? Asher govlu rishonim. Well, why is that important? So the Gemara Darshan is gvul she govlu rishonim lisasi. In other words, that do not infringe on a border that an early person decided that that's where his vegetables are, and you shouldn't come close to his vegetables. In other words, the early people, they knew what, what's, what's considered close, what's considered taking away from the nourishment of my plant. My governor, Shoinim, Omer Rebishmul Ben Achmeinu, Omer Rebishmul Ben Achmeinu, Omer Rebishmul Ben Achmeinu, Omer Rebishmul Ben Achmeinu, these are the, the children of Seir. Achoyri. What's Achoyri? Yoshvi Yaretz. Atakuli Alma Yoshvi Rekininu. We actually had a very similar question yesterday about uh, the boat. But anyways, the point is, why does the Torah have to say Yoshvi Haaretz? They dwell on the land. Everybody dwells on the land. Unless you're from Mars, you don't dwell on the land. But if you live in this earth, on earth, you dwell on the land. So what does it mean? Dwelling on the land means they understand the land. They literally understand the actual land, the dirt of the land. Plant this amount right over here. Make, make a row of olive trees. Make a row of apple trees. They knew exactly what dirt was what and what dirt was better off for this and this seed. For zayis, for for vines, for for tainim. The chayri. So now they take the word chayri. Chayri ches reish yud could also be reish yud ches. You you you, me, you mess it up a little bit. Chayri could be reyach. The chayri shemirichim esaretz. They literally sniff the land. They go. They sniff. Oh, here's a zayis tree. I got to plant a zayis tree. This smell uh, mm, grapes. Okay, v'chivi, Omer Papa, shoy toyem emes ha'aretz, k'chivio. What's a chivio in Aramaic? A snake. Snakes eat dirt. If Ari is here, why can't this father be here? It's a shayla, it's a good kasha. Motzi Shabbos, on Sunday, Be'ez Hashem will be here. Tell your father that I said that you're only as good as your weakest link. So if he sends his kid out to Cheder, he's only as protected as his kid in Cheder. And if he sends his kid to the shear, he's always protected as the shear. So there's no difference of you being here or he. And I prefer him being here than a lot of other people tell him. Says the Gemara, what? I didn't say not you. I said I prefer him here. Actually, you're taking a seat. You're on a seat. And I'm used to looking at him. And it's, it's whatever. Yeah, what? Where are you? No, 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 we don't, no, no. Hillel, you've been here for two years. <sighs> okay, we got to go through the rules again, Rabbi Isai. It's been, we've been off for two months. So I am holding 20 lines down on the Fpei Hei. And he's asking me a question on the Fpei Hei, Omid Aleph on the top. Is that a legal move, Rabbi Isai, is that legal? Anybody? <laughs> it's not a legal move. It's an illegal move. And another move like that, Hillel, you're going to get a red card. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to go easy on you tonight. <laughs> so anyways, so we have, first of all, they smell the land, they taste the land, and uh, I'm not going to give Avi Kamiansky any ideas, but there's a, whoever wants after this year, there's a, I just, I shouldn't say this. this but the kids are, this, they interviewed a, a guy, a guy in America, and he said something about, he was able to smell the guy coming up the stairs 
there was a thief in his house. He smelled him, and then he tasted him. I'm not. <laughs> and then he, the kids are, Avi probably knows what I'm talking about, and do not put it up on the screen. But it's a Meyer Dicker video, everyone wants to see it. It's unbelievable. It's good for Purim. I tasted it. I, then I smelled him. I smelled him. And then I heard him coming up the steps. Thup, thup, thup. And then I ran. <laughs> anyway, fine. Dail Hakim Ramizi knows what I'm talking about. Shine. But these guys smelled the land, they tasted the land, and they knew where to put the trees in. They knew everything. Now, what does Ravacha Bayakib Omar Khoiri? He better not. No, it's not funny to see it. It's funny to hear him. It's unbelievable. Ravacha Bayakib Omar Khoiri, Shinasu Bnei Khoiri Minichseim. Talking about Aesov. Dailam was turned, spun around waiting for that video to come on. <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. Please don't put it on. Okay, Rabbi Say, it's not. What? You know, you, do you even know what I'm talking about, Avi? Yes. He knows what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> After Shear. But you know what? Between the two Shear, we'll, we'll have a little, uh, a little, what is it called? Uh, a break. Uh, what? Intermission. intermission. Thank you, intermission. We'll have a little intermission, a little late sonus, and we'll go weiter. Zog to Gemara. So. Esau, they lost their land, as if we usually use it as a, oh, as a Milo. He became a Ben Chayrin. He's free. No. <laughs> they freed them from working the land. They stole all their land. They had no way to work their land anymore. That's what Chayrin means. Okay, a different Pshad and Chayrin. Next. Let's go deep into this now. <laughs> but we're not going to have 100 people. Gary, that's you, the Shitra I said we're going to have at least 500 people, so what are you going to do then? Omer Ravasi, Aruga, Toicha, Shisha, Chutz, Mikvuleo. Says Ravasi, the patch that we're dealing with right over here is six Tfachim without the borders. In other words, a border is one Tefach. So with the border, we're dealing with seven Tfachim. What if you included a border over here? Let's say this purple is a border. How much are you left with inside? Math. We're dealing with six tfachim and the purple. And one tefach comes off for each side. What are you left with the inside? Rabbi, say anybody, don't, don't answer everybody together. What? Four by four. Because you're taking off a tefach from this side, a tefach from this side, so now this is only four. A tefach from this side, four by four. Very good. Okay. Gvaldik. Says Ravasi, we're not dealing with a four by four. We're dealing with a six by six. In other words, the walkway that you walk between your patches, you see these patches over here? There's nine of them here. There's a walkway. So the walkway is not included in your 6x6. Six six. That's an extra tefach for each one. So the total of this walkway right over here is two tefachim wide. The inside, the patch is six. It's as wide as the sole of a foot, which is about a tefach, tefach. Why did he say soul? He should have said, it's the width of a tefach because of what's coming up. HaKadosh Baruch says, we're not like Mitzrayim. Eretz Yisrael is not like Egypt. In Egypt, you had to walk around on foot and water your land. In Eretz Yisrael, you don't have to. So what does it say you have to walk around by foot? How else are you going to water your land if not by feet? You're not going to do it on your hands. You're not going to stand on your hands and walk. People walk on their feet. So what's this extra word, biraglacha? Ma regel tefach avvul nami tefach. To teach us a major lesson in borders. A border is a regel. A foot, like we say in English, a foot. Regel doesn't mean your feet. It's a foot. Okay. But a foot, meaning not an American foot, but a, a tefach. We're going to have a machloikis between Rav and Shmuel. This idea that I'm planting five different things, is it unique to one patch? Or if I have nine patches or a hundred patches, I could do this idea in every single patch. Says Rav, no, you could only do it once, one patch. Says Shmuel, no, you could do it on every patch. What's the machlokes? So ask the Gemara. 
Okay, this, this idea right here, you have to pay attention for a second, it's mamish easy, but this is the idea of the whole, the whole and this is what all these charts come for, and it's very simple. Says the Gemara like this. What happened, so we're going to this chart down here. And what you see down here is, you see, I planted, I just, this is, by the way, from the Art Scroll, from Heritage Foundation, we have permission, but I added my color because I couldn't understand without. You, we're not going the full distance. If you don't go the full distance, you don't go, like, from side to side, like over here, all you do is two and a half tfachim, and then you go down two and a half tfachim, and then two and a half tfachim, two and a half tfachim. The issue is, the guy next to us, Right? Because how big is a walkway? Two tfachim. And we need to be distanced from, from a friend, three tfachim. So here's, you see this line right over here? That's this patch. And this is the center patch. This and this is not a problem. Why are these two not a problem? The perpendicular ones, not a problem. Why? Because they're perpendicular. We said already that if they come at a 90 degree angle to each other, it's obvious that they're two different species. So this is not a problem. Where's the problem? The problem is this guy and this guy. Now if these two guys continued, right, if there was another purple line right over here, what's the problem? That there are two tfachim within each other. Says the Gemara, I have an idea. You want to plant five species, times 100. You have 100 of these patches. You have a major property. So don't, don't be a chazer. Don't go all the way to, from corner to corner. Stop. Every two and a half tfachim, stop. So what's going to happen, you're going to be two tfachim away. You see this box right over here? This box is an enlargement of what's going on in here. From this red line to this red line is two tfachim. But it's on an angle. Why? Because I only went two and a half tfachim here, two and a half tfachim here, and the whole, the whole length is six tfachim. So I'm missing a tefach over here. So I have a box that's one tefach by two tfachim, just an ear, not a real box. So how much is one tefach by two tfachim? Says Rashi, three tfachim. Says Taisi, it's not true. It's 2.24 tfachim. The idea is that there's enough distance from this row to this row on an angle. It's more than two tfachim, and that's enough for me. Yeah? Do I got it or should I repeat? No, you're saying yes, but yeah? Huh? On an angle from here to here, we have more than two tvachim. If this guy continued, it'll be exactly two tvachim. But since he stopped short and he stopped short and it's more of an angle, like the green line. The green line here is the distance between this row and this row. Now, what's the distance between this guy and this guy? Two. And that's okay. When they're parallel to each other, that's not okay. Great. So remember this idea, because we're going to use it at least another two times. Good luck, everybody. I'm just looking at the screen for a second. Moti hasn't been here. I thought, Chavez. I thought on Yantif, you're going to come visit us. Mr. Kornbluth, I read your story on Yantif in Nachman Seltzer's book, and I didn't realize, not only that, you're on the back cover. Your story is featured on back. You know that? I don't know if you knew that. Oh, Leon, I got to tell you this. Maybe I'll say, you know what I'll say? I'll try to save it for the beginning of next year. Fine, let's go right there. We're doing well, we're doing well. We're, we're almost done with this stuff. So, Aruga Bechur Vashaninu Vaikya Makam Kronos. Ask the Gemara, but if I plant it in this funny way, where... These guys are, you leave a little, a little angle over there. I could plant as much as I want. I'm not going to be within each other. I'm not going to be within three tfachim of anything. Says the Gemara, different than what we said in the beginning of the sugya, that each one of these lines goes up to this blue dot. Now Rav is saying he went into the blue dot. He did a full line. Why? It's not clear why Rav has to learn like that. The point is that he didn't go, he didn't stop short. He went all the way. Big lines. And big lines, if you do big lines, then you can't plant next to it. Because then there'll be people parallel, there'll be lines parallel to you. Ask the Gemara, but why, did Rav, why was Rav forced to say this? 
If you want to plant on the outside, don't fill in the lines completely. Just go halfway. You hear the question? Who told Rav to say that he filled in these big lines? Let's try to get the max that we could get into these patches. And he has a lot of patches. He has a lot of land. So he didn't fill up the patches completely. He went halfway. We're concerned that if I allow this guy to plant like this, do all the shtick, he'll come to forget and he'll fill it in. He'll just fill in and he'll do his neighbor filled in and then he'll have a problem that we, he's less than three tzvachim. Why, why are many patches different than one patch? When it comes to one patch, we're not concerned. So they were trying to explain because it takes many days to do this. It's a lot of work. And by the time he gets to the second day, third day, he's going to forget what he did and he's going to fill in these patches. One patch, we're not so concerned. Ask the Gemara, I'm very sad. I worked hard. I made a nice chart. It might even be, Yosef, you might be able to find it on your thing and maybe you'll give it to Avi. But I did not print it. I don't think I printed it. On the way here, I realized I didn't print it. Okay, what? Reish Tar. It's called. Ask the Gemara. I'll take the sitter. I'll borrow the sitter even though I shouldn't. If this is a field and it goes on an angle, ask the Gemara, you see, what happens over here? This is a field. This is wheat. This is cucumbers. I could go like this. Halakhically, I could go right into the field, no problem. Why? Because it's so obvious what's going on here. Everybody realizes that this is, a, this is another species of, of whatever. This is, you see it on there? Reish Tar? No? The brown is wheat, the white is cucumbers. So I'm planting right into it. The Masifta for some reason goes like this. I'm not sure why. I don't understand them exactly. I think it's even this. If somebody knows that it's not like this, then tell me. I think it's even this way. For some reason, the Masifta goes, spits into it like that, but not, even, not, a, not a drop more. I think it's even more, Whoop, like that. Yeah, so it's a, this is Reish Tar. I'm going on an angle, I'm taking a, a triangle, and I could put it into another field. I don't care how big this triangle is. This could be 1,000 feet by 1,000 feet, these lines. You're, you're like the Masifta you hold? If somebody knows clear, let me know. I'm not, I wasn't clear. I looked in Rashi. I looked there. I wasn't clear. No, 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 no. There's one that has the, uh, the, our, our logo into, into, uh, into, huh? I have it. You, you do have it? Oh, here, yeah. He's holding it. Somebody's holding it up over there. How do they have it? Oh, Tomer's holding it on his thing. So what Tomer is showing over there is what the Masifta shows on the, so it's a triangle that touches the side of the field. I was chutzpahdik and I was arguing on the Masifta and I put the logo into the field. If somebody knows 100% that that's how it is, let me know. I don't know, I'm not learning climbs, I don't know, I couldn't figure it. Hold on, he'll, 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 three times, mm -mm. All right. So what's the, what's going on here? Ask the Gemara, what's the problem? You have all these guys. So you have nine of them, a hundred of them. What? They're all defined by themselves. They're all individual pieces that are obvious to everybody else that they're individual patches. Just like a Rosh Tar goes into another field and it's not a problem halachically, even though they're inches from each other. Even if you go like the Masifta, the, the, the spitz of that Rosh Tar goes all the way up to the next field. It's two inches away from whatever's planted there, and that's okay. Yeah. What? Oh, you're talking about in these guys? You're talking about in these guys? No, the triangle. Why don't you see it? Of course you see it. Because what happens is you don't see a triangle now. Yeah, you do. You do. If you ever went to a field, you see everything's planted this way, and it goes in this way. This is growing corn. This is growing carrots. They're very different. It's... it's And if it's touching, I, that, 
Hello, what the Masifta is saying is a no-brainer. Of course that's okay. I'm saying even what I'm saying. What I'm saying even what I'm saying. What the Masifta says is Pasha, too Pasha. No, I mean, that's the concept of Rosh Tar. I'm saying that, that he's limiting it. You could go even further with it. Why, why is he stopping at the border? That's what I'm asking. What? Many what? Yeah, why not? As long as it's defined. Yeah. The Gemara is asking right now that you could have many. Look, the Gemara is saying all these should be Rosh Tars. They're all defined. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Here, we're going to have, we're gonna have something, w what you're asking in a, in a second. Yeah, I think so. Me like, nah, I'm here. And th good, he just reminded me of a good riot to me from, from the Gemara of a circle. We'll see soon. Me like, nah, tor yorik nichnas Nichnas, it says. L'toich soda acher. I'm just saying the words. Motor mevnation nire soif soda. So we see this concept of Rosh Tar when it's very, when you could visually see a difference in fields, then it's okay. Says the Gemara, ain't Rosh Tar ba'aruga. There's no such thing by a little patch that doesn't work. We're talking about a serious field plowed, the whole thing, not a little patch, a six by six. Fine. So that's Rav. So Nachmol, Rav says. Well, Rav just said, Rav said it, it only works in one plot, in one six by six. And the Gemara asked different questions. And he said, okay, but I'm talking about one time. You can only do it one time if it's like this. From the blue all the way through, only one plot in a whole land. Now comes Shmuel. Shmuel Amar. Arugo ben Arugo Shemunu. Says Shmuel, no. It's not one plot. It's many. I can do six by six by six, six by six by six by six. All my six by sixes. Even though they're lined up next to each other and they have two tefachim in between each other, one tefach walkway per each uh, patch of land, and I could go on and on and on like that. He argues with the rab. But why could you do this? The two parallel rows are too close to each other. They're two tefachim, and you need to be three tefachim apart. So Shmuel is going to have to go back to our pshat over here. That they're not parallel to each other. He stops short. Every time they, they come next to each other parallelly, he stops and he puts this kind of angle in it that's almost three tfachim, and that's enough. But he never has a full parallel road to each other because then it'll be taka, then it'll be asr. But if I want to be like that, if I want to keep on planting five species over and over and over, this is the way to do it. I could go according to Shmuel. Drive myself crazy, plant two and a half tfachim, stop, two and a half tfachim, stop, keep on going and make a beautiful design around my, my backyard, and fine. There is a way to do it. Omar Ula, Bo Bimarova. So they asked Marova this question. Let's see. Where is it? I think it's here. Hifkiya telemech odafne kula mahu. Here's the question. If a guy dug, Tysus explains, it's one tefach deep. One tefach wide, one tefach deep. So what did he gain? What does the Gemara gain? You gain that it's visually different. It's deep. Everything is up here. He's down there. Even though he went a whole row, and even though over here it's only two tefachim away from the edge, look, he's parallel. Perhaps because he's, he's visually by itself, maybe it should be mutter. What did we learn in the Mishnah? You could do a single seed in the center. What if I expand that single seed and I make it a whole entire row? Either right down the middle or off center a little bit, two pshatim. The point is, yes, it's a lot. It's a lot of seeds. But visually, anybody takes a look at my six by six patch, sees, oh, there's a whole nother, another thing going on here. It's lower down than everything else. Omar of Shesha is no good. It's way too close to over here. This becomes bottle. It doesn't look like it's something by itself on its own. Osir. Ravashi Omar, any ruva mevatel sashura. It's fine. What is it? So what does Ravashi really say? Ravashi says that one row of anything, it could be different. That's what Ravashi says. It's not mevatel. So I have a question on Ravashi. Ravashi. 
Hanoiteash the Ishurois Shel Kishuin, if somebody plants two rows of cucumbers, Shte Ishurois Shel Deluin, and then two rows of gourds of squash or whatever, Shte Ishurois Shel Poyla Mitzri, some sort of bean, Mutter. Why is that Mutter? Because two rows are considered a sada bifneyatzma. It's its own field. We're not talking about a, a, a patch. We're talking about like in a farm, you know, 500 feet long, two rows. That's its own, its own sada. What about shura achas shekishuim? Shura achas shel deluim? Shura achas shel poel Only one row? Awesome. But you just said, Ravashi, that one row is its own little entity. So how come over here you're selling one, one row of, of cucumbers It's not its own entity? Says the Gemara, Shana hachi, hacha de ikya shracha. I kind of understood, I bought a house in Chicago where we lived for a few years. Avi, you know what house I'm talking about. Avi, the one I sold to Benji. So we were there for a few months. All of a sudden I go in the backyard, I see crazy amount of cucumbers. And so I was like, wow, he planted cucumbers before. And then every year we didn't plant, it just came up by itself, I guess. When the cucumbers um, decay, like the seeds go in and you get like whatever. But cucumbers, they grow everywhere. That's just the nature of them. They, they're, they're wild. They like to have these, these little things. They grab onto things by themselves naturally. And they start, they go everywhere. Dekeshracha. That we're talking about these kind of vegetables that just get entangled within each other. And therefore, this is a problem. One, one, one row is not, is not a good, is not a good uh, simon. Omar Afghan or Rabbi Yochanan. is called Genosi Yorek. So now comes Rabbi Yochanan and says, listen, I have a trick. If somebody wants to get away with this whole thing and do more, plant more than this guy. This is too little for me. Plant a single seed, it's ridiculous. I want to do, I want to do more. So what does he do? Oisa Arugo, he wants to plant the entire thing. Oisa Arugo Shisha Shisha, he gets a six by six. Vaigabach Hamisha, Umemala Karnusea, Komashi Yirza. It's basically very simple. He makes a circle. That is, the circumference is five Tvachim. If I have a square that's six Tvachim, and from side to side of the circle, the circumference is five, so basically I distant my. My, my circle from the edge, I have a tefach on each side. Right? Because I only, I'm only left with one tefach. I have to divide it on both sides. So what do I have left? I have a tefach. So if I do a whole circle and I plant one species, then I could go on the half a tefach and plant four more. Because now they're, they're broken up. Visually, I could see four different things. Forget these arrows. That's for different. That's for next sugya. But this sugya, we're talking about a circle, and then you have four. And we said if, it's, if they come to each other on a 90 degree angle, it's fine. So these guys are fine. Over here where it's white, you don't plant anything. And you go like this. This is, this is cucumbers, tomatoes, onions, and peppers. And this middle guy is carrots. So you have the five species. And now you used up your entire six tfachim. What's the problem, Yasin? If you plant over here, then it won't be visually, it won't be a circle. You mean if you saw like that, right here. It's mashman that you're not planting there. This is a real, a real circle. No, you asked about the pizza pie before. So I'm, this, this is a good raya that whatever visually you could see is different. I don't know, pizza might be different because the slices are next to each other. But this as a pizza, smack in the middle is fine. And then right next to it, these are different shapes, so they, they work. Ask the Gemara. Now, the Gemara understood that you're doing this over and over and over, nine times in this picture, or a hundred times. Ask the Gemara, but you can bait the veining. But how could you do this? This is the end of the sixth Tvachim, and now here's the other guy. Now you're two Tvachim next to the next guy. How did you gain by planting over here? You're still two Tvachim. One, one patch is next to the other patch. Why could I go on and on and on with other patches? One patch is fine, I get it, I get one patch. 
But how can I plant another patch next to this patch? But they're two tvachim away from each other. Next patch starts two tvachim away. Where does the next patch start? The next patch starts two tvachim from the edge of this. Here, here's my, here's my, here's my walkway. This is my walkway. And then this starts all over again. So this guy and this line over here is only two tvachim away. All patches, right? Here are the patches. A bunch of patches. We said each patch is two tvachim away from each other. So I did a whole circle in this patch. Great. It's a whole circle and I planted on the four sides. And now what do I do over here? Circle and I plant next to the side. But now they're, they're only two tvachim away from each other. The sides are two tvachim away from each other. How can I keep on going? No, Rav, Rav, Kahana, Rav Yochanan says, I could plant my entire field if I go like this. Says the Gemara, so let's see inside. Says the Gemara, the Bey Rabbi be Machir Ben Abinayim. You're right. I, I, you can't plant next to it. We're talking about a one time thing. You can't plant next to it. Ravashi Omar, Imhoyu, Zruim Shesi, Zarim Erev, Erev Zarim Shesi. So basically, if you are planting Shesi, you see these guys, the plants are going in this direction, and these guys are going in this direction. If you look closely, I don't know if you could see it, you could see that the direction of the plants are, are different. The Misifta did a good job here. This is from the Misifta. These plants are going like this. And these plants are going like that. So now there's a, there's, there's a distinction between what I'm planting. So the first shot is, I wasn't trying to get my whole backyard. I was just trying to get six tvachim by six tvachim. How could I possibly fill up six tvachim by six tvachim? I wasn't talking about how to get my whole backyard. Within six tvachim, if my whole backyard is six tvachim, I know how to I have a trick. I plant a circle and a square around the circle. And this, this shot is saying no. I could actually plant an entire backyard, even if it's a thousand by a thousand, because the, the edges, the borders, are going in different directions. And when I look at it visually, I could see that they're different, they're planted in different ways. And Mimela, they, I'm not going to confuse them. It's not climb. Eisvir of Inel Ravashi, Avoidas Yorok Biorok Acher, Shisha Tvachim. This halach that we learned, I could plant five different types of seeds in six Tvachim. It says mafurish daf It says mafurish that it's a square, meaning not a circle. So what are you telling me? There's a circle here. Kitavlu the shari You can't you can't do it in a circle. You could go like this. What the Gemara understands, you could do this. You could plant five in straight lines and one in the center, but no circles. Says the Gemara, awesome la kuli bo kula chrino. Later ishtar hayotzim imeno. We're talking about squares. Yes, it has to be a square. If you're going to do the ishtar, you want to do this trick, it has to be a square. One square and another square. Or like the Masifta does it, I have to be careful because maybe I'm wrong. So one square up to another square. Fine. This doesn't work in a circle. The trick of a rosh tar doesn't work in a circle. So we're talking that, that over there that you're making a diok that has to be square is talking in order to, to, to use this trick of rosh tar, everything has to be squares. Nice lines to each other. No circles within each other. Why? I don't know. You're going to ask me why. Because it, it's a... Uh... So the kids are, Rabbi said, we're going to stop right here and we're going to continue. What? Yeah. Oh, ah. Baruch Hashem. You're stopping you. One more time out before you stop YouTube. Somebody sent on the group that there are sheetists like me. But there are sheetists like you also? Both. What? Because the Mesifta says it like you. I, I'm just guessing. I didn't, I didn't know. I, I, whatever. Okay, fine. Baruch Hashem. There's a sheet like me. Shut it down.